If this even slightly captures how you feel when first looking through the audio options in Hubwork 5, you're not alone. This is an astonishingly capable piece of software and deserves taking some time to explore and learn what it's capable of. First disclaimer, I'm an enthusiastic amateur with no audio training, but I've used Hubwork since its inception in 2002. Martin Dyde has nurtured an incredible piece of software through the years, and the complexity should not surprise you. Consider it works on both Windows and Macintosh operating systems, and I personally have used it on everything from a single MIDI keyboard and anemic laptop. I had a chance to visit Apex, North Carolina, where the Ambassador Presbyterian organ features 8,500 watts spread across 44 audio channels. I currently enjoy a system running on macOS driven by a custom MIDI console from Content in the Netherlands. Like many, I was excited for the release of Hauptwerk 5, which features a highly advanced audio engine and inbuilt convolution reverb. Let's begin by taking a look at how audio flows through the internal mixer. When you activate a pipe sample, the engine feeds the audio first into a pathway refers to as a perspective. Through assignment via a mixer bus group, this audio perspective then moves into the primary audio buses. Here, each bus may be connected to a speaker, an audio recorder track, or have individual reverb added. Next, the audio is passed on to the master mix bus, which combines all of the upstream buses, for example, to create a single stereo output for headphones or recording. Again, each master mix bus may be connected to a speaker, an audio recorder track, or have individual reverb added. Optionally, audio may be routed through a series of intermediate mix buses, where again, each bus may be connected to a speaker, an audio recorder track, or have individual reverb added. Let's now consider the possible complexity here. There are four perspectives, uh, only one has its volume up per default. Each perspective, however, can flow through the mixture individually. And there are 1,024 mixer bus groups, 1,024 primary buses, eight intermediate mix buses, and eight master mix buses. Oh, and you have eight presets to store all of this in. Let's talk a little bit about my setup. So I am currently running two home theater receivers, which are routing stereo audio to floor standing full range speakers with a powered subwoofer. So I'm essentially running 4.1 audio with front and rear stereo pairs. Let's work through the default settings in the mixer to try and understand how some of this comes together. So you'll probably be aware Hauptwerk provides four alternate configurations, and it's probably a good idea whilst learning how to use the mixer to begin by experimenting with one of the alternate configurations. Let's begin by loading the St. Anne's Mosley set. Now, all of the controls to the audio system can be triggered via a very useful toolbar option. I'm going to bring up the large floating control panel, audio mixing options. And we'll keep this on screen down here at the bottom right, which has access to all of the options, including which mixer preset we're using and the impulse response scalar, which will control the amount of reverberation applied. Let's begin by looking at some default settings. First of all, ensure your audio device is appropriately configured. Let's take a look at mine. In its default configuration, Hauptwerk will route stereo to device channels one and two. So if this isn't the channel you wish to use, you can make an adjustment here and you can additionally add some names to make it easier to track. The first place that audio goes is here to the rank routing screen. And it is here, I'll maximize this, we have all of the ranks listed. And I would just like to point out that there is a useful feature here click to select, but I can use command click on the Mac or control click on PC to select individual ranks, single click to deselect that, or I can command A or control A on PC to select all. For right now, let's just look at the Dulciana 8. Coming over to the right-hand part of the dialog, 
a useful bookmark as well. All of the dialog boxes have buttons which will quickly take you to other parts of the mixing system so you can find your way around. We're looking at the output perspectives which I mentioned. In the default setting, only perspective one is activated, but the other three are available here and can be individually configured. Prior to moving on, I'm going to move this window slightly to one side so we can keep an eye on multiple things. The audio now moves to mixer bus groups, so let's go ahead and open that. This is the mixer bus group window, and you'll notice that the bus groups are listed on the left. In this case, we're interested in output perspective one, so let's click on that and see what it's connected to. The primary buses are all listed, and you'll notice four of them are selected. We'll come back to that later, but we'll follow this through the system. So these are the primary mixer buses, so now we need to go find those. I'm going to keep this dialog box open, just move it over here to one side. Primary buses are found in the mixer dialog box. And here's the mixer dialog box. Mixer preset one are these first eight options. So these are the master mix buses for preset one. And you'll notice that here is the first time we're actually seeing opportunity to route audio through speakers. It wasn't present in the other dialog boxes. And also to the audio recorder and the impulse reverb. So in this dialog, if we move to the very bottom, we'll find advanced items, which when expanded shows all of the primary buses. So again, at the top, we have the master mix buses. Down here, we have the intermediate mix buses, which will rarely be used in routine use. And now these are the primary buses. So we're finally getting to the true meat of the situation. So let's follow the great Dulciana 8, which is flowing through mixer bus group five. Group five includes these four primary buses. The four primary buses are over here and they're sending their output back up to the very top stereo mix one and this is where the default output is finally finding its way out through our stereo speakers. So this out of the box configuration is designed to route all of the ranks through a single perspective, which Hauptwerk will select as perspective one, goes through those primary buses and finally gets mixed down and comes through the main master mix bus here. So for general use, it would be possible to select a single reverb, for example, this one, and never come back to these dialog boxes, merely adjust the amount of reverb that is being applied to our sample set through here. Let's take a moment to talk about impulse response. Hubtwork has an impulse response convolution engine, which can be applied anywhere from the primary buses all the way to the master mix buses. Convolution reverb consists of a recorded sample called an impulse response, or IR, of an acoustic space, which captures the direct sound and the reflections, and then allows for software to computationally recreate the properties of that acoustical space. Hauptwerk ships with a list of impulse responses, and honestly, it's a lot of fun just to try these out and see what they all sound like, but the naming, if you have wondered, does actually have uh, quite a bit of sense to it. Here's the nomenclature borrowed from Sonus Paradisi. ORTF, or cardioid, refers to directional microphones which are pointed towards the source. And again, IR recording involves a source generated from a speaker, which is then picked up by microphones at some distance. Omni refers to two omnidirectional microphones with good separation. X in meters is the distance from the sound source to the microphones, and Y in seconds is an approximate reverberation time. LR1 through LR8 are varied spacing of the source material, where LR1 is narrow separation of the source speakers, LR8 would be the widest separation. So if we look at this example, for instance, this is Church 04. It's an omnidirectional microphone receiving the source, which is 16 meters away, uh, wide separation of that source, and about a 4.5 second reverberation time. So in this example, I'm going to configure my audio interface and we'll look at a basic surround sound setup. So 
Main one and two, and it's going to be front left. Next stop is configuring my mixer. I am going to keep a main recording mix. However, I am not going to wrap this as my plan is to use surround sound. So my recording mix is purely for recording. Similarly, my headphones mix is going to be connected to headphones left and right. I'm not using a separate subwoofer channel, but I am going to call this my front speakers. And we'll go ahead and break front left and right. And I'm going to use this as my rear speakers. Let's do rear left and right. I'm going to clear out the rest of these just for simplicity to give some helpful names to the primary buses. Bus one, we can leave blank. This we will call front. This we will call rear group. My front group, I do want it to go to the recorder, to my headphones and my front speakers. My rear group, I want this to go to my rear speakers, headphones and main recording. So let's rename this front. Hopefully it's reach selected rear and four and five can go away now we'll go to our rank routing let's select everything we want to ensure right now perspective one is going to go front perspective two will go rear 3D panning option, we have some options. I'm going to select all and perspective one, which is going to be front, is at 100%. Perspective two, perhaps we want to have about 50% of the overall mix. So I'll do that by adjusting like so. So right now I have St. Anne's configured to send the entirety of the output to the front speakers and 50% to the rear. What about adding some reverb? Let's go back to our mixer reverb option. And here at the front group, we can apply impulse response. So that is now giving me reverb to my front and rear. Now there is one final setting that we need to adjust in the voicing screen. And that is release samples truncation. Perspective one, release tail truncation. The default is zero, which is no truncation. So I'm going to move the sli slider to about 250. Similarly, perspective two. St. Anne's, which is routing 100% through the front channels, 50% through the rear channels, reverb applied to both and I have the option to dial my reverb up and down through here. I do recommend checking out Sonus Paradisi's website. There is a impressive collection of impulse responses to go with most of the major sample sets. I'm fortunate to enjoy the uh, St. Martini Kirk uh, sample set from Groningen and Jerry recorded a set of impulse responses to go with this, which capture not only the effects of direct, diffuse and rear, but also varied separation of the source. So looking at this where you see LR1 through LR3, one could, for example, use the LR1 impulse responses on the positif or central samples of the organ and LR3 on the pedal towers or wider separation. And again, this can be applied to any organ sample set. With that in mind, this is how I have mapped to create essentially a 12 channel virtual impulse response environment, uh, which sound really, really good. Let's take a look at my working setup. This is my Scott's configuration. 
my stereo mix for recording stereo output is here and I've included martini reverb so I remember my stereo mix 2 is outputting directly to headphones my mix 3 is going to the front speakers mix 4 is going to rear speakers of the next primary buses I've configured one per manual manual 1, 2, 3, 4 pedals and then I have the rear and two separate buses for noises now as I mentioned in the impulse response discussion the separate impulse responses all of the front buses are going to the front speakers all of my rear buses are going to the rear speakers if I now go into bus groups to give these same names this is really just a placeholder in this case so now in the rank routing screen great stops perspective one perspective two and so on and you can see all of those listed here perspective one is getting 100 percent perspective two is getting 100 percent perspective one release tail truncation Let's look at a true surround set. For my true wet surround sets, I essentially have 12 internal channels, all connected to front and rear speakers independently. I'm only using the default perspective one. So, Grand Org front is mapped to manual one front. Pedal front is mapped to pedal front, and so on. Rear positif is mapped to rear positif. So with that, I'm going to conclude my brief overview. Again, these are my thoughts and experiences, and I'm sure I have made mistakes. And there are probably some of you watching who are horrified at some of the uh, strategies I have taken. If that's the case, please comment. I would love to hear from you. But I know that I could not have made the progress I did without help from people in the Hauptwerk community and I felt the least I could do was to return some of that experience and maybe help you and inspire you in your journey. Enjoy!